So how you doing folks? Back with another video. Again, we've got the Sega Master System 2 on the bench. But today's video is slightly different in the sense that what I want to do today is create my own custom cart to run some software on the system. So I'm going to be making a repro cart. Um, I'll need it in an upcoming project. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a cartridge. So unlike other consoles like the Mega Drive, which I use quite a lot, um, I just have an EverDrive that I can run test ROMs and things off, but I don't have the same for the Sega Master System. And I don't play the Sega Master System that all that much, but I do RGB mods and other mods on my own consoles and for friends and acquaintances. So it's important to be able to run software, but in this case, I don't really want to go to the expense of getting an EverDrive for the Sega Master System, considering I very rarely actually play the console. So with that in mind, I've picked up two 27C256 UV EEPROMs to use in the project. Um, now you could go with a more modern 27C257, which is the electronically erasable uh, EEPROM or ROM. Um, and that's probably a better thing to go for, but at the time on eBay, these were cheaper and easier for me to get within Europe than going for the more um, harder to find at this moment uh, EE proms, um, which are a little, probably a little bit cheaper and a little bit better to use in the long run. So the goal here is to create a cartridge that allows me to run the Sega Master System test suite. A piece of software inspired by Artemio's 240p test suite and created by Zverex, I hope I'm pronouncing that okay, uh, an Italian gent who's created this bit of um, software for us to test and run on our Sega Master System. So I'll leave a link to the GitHub page for uh, the ROM and the project and uh, thanks again to Zverex for creating this ROM and um, it's going to allow us to do some really cool things in the future. So the SMS test suite is 32 kilobytes in size. So we've got the appropriate EEPROMs for a ROM of that size, but we need a donor cart. So unless you're going to be using a reproduction PCB, you really do need a donor cart with a game on it that's the same size, just to make things easier for yourself. So with that said, I went with Super Tennis, a game that often appears on the top 10 worst games on the Sega uh, Master System. It's a clone of uh, Tennis on the um, NES. So yeah, I don't like sacrificing a game really to be honest with you, but if you're going to sacrifice any, this is kind of in that pile. Also, you know, it's going to be going doing some great stuff for some other consoles, RGB mods and Sega Master System 2s and things like that. So, you know, um, its life will not be... Uh, be given up in vain as such. So with the cart open and the PCB out, you can see that it's a relatively simple uh, design, like much of the things we've kind of encountered with the Sega Master System. So step one will be, we're gonna desolder the chip. So for the desoldering, I'm gonna be using my desoldering station, um, just because it's easier. But that said, I mean, there's, nothing stopping you using um, just a regular manual solder um, sucker, solder pump. Um, you'll get the same results. Just take your time and you should be fine. But for ease of use, I'm, and because I have it, I'm going to use my vacuum desoldering station. So with our PCB and the original ROM chip desoldered, we now need to program our UV EEPROM, um, our 27C256. So uh, a few things you're going to need. Um, 
Obviously, uh, a universal programmer would be handy. I use the top 3000. I'm kind of getting a little old now at this stage. It does have a signed driver for Windows, uh, the latest version. Um, it can be hard to find as most of the users of this uh, program are in, are in China, so there's not much kind of English language support. Um, if you go to Arcade Projects, uh, the forums there, they'll have a link to the latest firmware. Um, there's a forum there where they track this uh, programmer. The reason I went for the top 3000 is that it has quite a large uh, uh, socket here for programming, so you can do really large um, chips for arcade boards or for Sega Mega Drive and stuff like that without the need for an adapter. Um, and when it works, it works really good. You'll also may need, uh, depending on whether you go with the UVE proms or the EE proms, um, an eraser. So there's just some UV LEDs in here and a timer. Um, what I tend to do is when I get new uh, chips, I'll just uh, pop them in the eraser for 10 minutes regardless. So our UV EPROMs have done 10 minutes in the eraser. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll hook up our programmer and uh, we'll blank check and program them. So I'm not going to go into too much detail with the programmer itself as every programmer is different and there's so many of them on the market there that you're probably going to be using a different one than me. So here we are with top all version uh, 8.92 from 2021 um, this is the latest version that I'm using so first what we want to do is we want to um, select chip so um, we're going with ST micro um, 27 C 256. So that's an M27C256. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to do a blank check. So tools. Um, I'm going to read all. And basically it should be all Fs. All across the entire address space there we go yeah that's completely blank so now what I want to do is get my ROM so over here I have my uh, SMS test suite which I just renamed to dot bin from dot SMS so I'm just gonna copy that path again this doesn't have to be byte swapped um, the processor in the Sega Master System, the Z80, isn't like the, the 6800, the Motorola, so we don't need to buy it swap. So uh, I'm going to load and we're going to paste, open SMS test suite.bin. Um, so yeah, this should all be perfect. Um, I've looked at this in a hex editor briefly but yeah we should be fine so um yeah if i just hit go it's gonna blank check write and then verify so if we go go complete uh took 5.21 seconds to write it um which is fairly quick um, that's another good thing about the top 3000. It's really fast, um, especially with, you know, smaller um, ROMs like this. So folks, before we solder on the new ROM that we just wrote, what I want to do is I just want to clean this edge connector. Get it nice and shiny. It's not in bad shape, to be honest with you. I've seen a lot worse, but we're going to use um, our eraser trick again, and we're just going to go over the edge so we're going to spray some IPA on here now and get a cotton bud and we're just going to clean it off just to get rid of any debris 
good quality eraser isn't going to leave any residue on the actual contacts, so we're just kind of cleaning it here for good measure. Now with the uh, car clean, we can install our EEPROM. So I put a little sticker over the top to stop the electrons falling out. Um, and we're just going to pop it in here. Now, sometimes newer chips like this won't fit in quite as easily. So I just like to put them on their edge like that and just slowly, gently rock them backwards. And that should help a little. So, is it? It's going to help a little? <laughs> Maybe do it a little bit more on the other side. There we go. So our notch here gives us our alignment and we know from when we took the original EEPROM off that it was aligned this way. So let's just try and get this. There we go. That's nice and snug. And now we can kind of uh, solder that into place. So I want to clean off some of this flux, but I don't want to do some of the uh, work I did cleaning up those uh, edge fingers. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of tape over them just to kind of keep them uh, from getting flux on them. So there we go, we have our EEPROM soldered into place and the board's nice and clean. So now we're just going to pop it back in its shell and give it a test. So just before I put it back together I thought I'd show you this. Um, I basically took the label off and just marked it SMS test suite. So we're going to pop it back in here and we'll give it a test. So these are quite handy little game bits. I have one that's uh, the same size as kind of the um, Nintendo one. Um, you can pick them up on Amazon, eBay, um, a few different retro stores like Castlemania will have them. Um, they're not hard to find, but they're definitely worth having. Um, you may already have one if you have a security driver set, uh, like an iFixit set or something like that. They often include um, these driver bits. But yeah, you'll find them. They're not hard to find. Um, I'm just reversing the screw out life here. Click and then driving at home. Um, yep, yeah, that's a great trick to do regardless. Again, hand tighten, you don't need this to be, like, you don't need to tighten the hell out of these. So I have the Sega Master System hooked up to the RetroTINK 5X Pro, and we're gonna pop in our new test cart. And I'll just turn the visibility for that on. So this is the output from the RetroTINK 5X going through my StarTech USB H USB 3 HD capture. Not a great name for a device. Okay, so we're expecting, yeah, Sega license screen. And there we go. Um, you can see we have our test suite. Now, you may notice there's like a line every so often. So I have a sync issue, I think, with my uh, StarTech device. Um, but that's okay. And just... Um, out of uh, curiosity from the previous video um, we're using that controller just because I thought it might be
kind of cool to do that. So what I'm really interested in here is the video test. So color bars, color bleed, grid, full colors. This is really going to be what I'm looking for. So full colors, white. So for testing RGB um, bypasses, this is going to be really, really awesome. Red, green, blue, back to white. But yeah, thanks again to Zverex for the SMS test suite. What a cool piece of kit. So with that said, um, yeah, let's wrap things up. So guys, that's been our little video on creating a Sega Master System Repro Cart, 32 kilobyte version. You'll possibly need to look up games that are 64 or 128 if you're looking for a donor board. Um, I know there are uh, reproduction PCBs out there and other ways to kind of create your own um, Sega Master System cartridges. But for me, this was ideal. I know we had to sacrifice a Super Tennis and, you know, some people might take exception to that. But for me, the SMS test suite is going to ensure that when I do RGB bypass mods on Sega Master Systems, that I get the levels perfect. So older CRTs were more forgiving with the RGB and sync levels they received, but more modern equipment like scalers and capture cards are a bit more sensitive to receiving the right levels. So this cartridge is going to be infinitely more useful to me than a super tennis card. Well guys, hope you liked the video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll chat to you all again.